Well, I'm wrapping up work on the back of the Cherokee and building a draw system. I'll show you what I've done so far. So here it is so far. Um, these pieces are a bit loose because they need to be disconnected to get the whole thing out, but they're just decoration. But it's just kind of like a platform. It's made of pretty thin wood to try and keep the weight down, but I've put it on an aluminium frame and it bolts in through the tie down point. So you have this channel running along and the D rings that you normally have in the rear, I've popped those out, I've drilled them out to M10, put some reinforcement the other side and you just drop four bolts through. So the whole thing can actually lift out um, pretty easily. But basically you've got um, a little compartment there. So make use of the dead space. Another one there that's a weird shape. Um, probably put triangulated sandwiches in there. But in all seriousness, the reason I'm redesigning the draw system from the platform system you saw me use is I just really want to get back to having some like basic storage where I can put everything in a drawer, just throw it all in and, and close it up and have a lot of space here still. There we go. The draw runs just arrived and uh, these are 80 centimeters long and they can support up to 100 kilos. So you've got a little latch at the top. I chose black. Um, and obviously they lock like that and open up. And if you want to actually take them apart and clean them, you open the latch and then the whole thing can come apart and you can sort of grease it up, you know. That's an important aspect. So as this is made of aluminium, it should be pretty easy to kind of bolt this into. But first I'm just going to use some self-tapping sheet metal screws just to get everything in position. So I want it somewhere like that, so it's just clearing the top of the plastic trim here. I'll take this armour off to be able to access the bolt holes up there. Something like that will do. I'm just going to get these in position now. I'm using a 12mm socket to get the distance right. And uh, that's how the pros do it apparently. Like, you know, you just find something that's the right size, shove it in there, right? This is what we do. And then, uh, I need to sort of bang a screw in there, but the position's not quite right. That was um, a technique taught to me by um, my great grandfather. It's called the slam. It just lets the metal know who's the boss. That's just kind of what we do around here, you know. Yeah, but it's just like it, it wasn't quite a, obeying me, so now I'm just, I had to do another one. So. We got 84, 84. Nice, that's what we're looking at. Right, I'm just gonna make the other side piece. And uh, I think basically I'm ready to start screwing. I can't help it. So this is what the side pieces look like. I've had to angle the back to coincide with the back of the chair or the seat. So um, I will make a back plate at an angle, but uh, hopefully this isn't too much trouble. This isn't a tutorial because for me to do a tutorial about how to make something out of wood, it's like, um, yeah, it's like trying to it's like a fish showing you how to fly. Although there are some flying fish. Let's see if it's a snug fit. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I guess the point being is the latch is the highest thing it has to clear. So I'm just gonna put that there. 
but it doesn't actually even need to be that much clearance really does it but i suppose it might bow with weight i gotta think about that bit and i don't know it's pretty strong wood indecisive so uh yeah i think that's gonna be it i think that's gonna be the clearance i'm gonna use these screws just for the time being hopefully this will just let me get it in position and then i'll bolt it in place So here we go, it's installed. Obviously the screws are just to mark the location. I will drill and bolt it, but uh, yeah, it is, it is just, I've ground this down a touch. It is just kind of hovering over this, like just making a slight bit of contact. I don't think that's really a bad thing because it means I get more height to put stuff in the drawer, which is the most important thing. So, you know, I don't really care. And in time that will obviously, just sound shit that's all i guess that's that's the problem it's gonna sound dog log because it's scraping the top of that plastic thing and the metal thing but pretty good they're, they're good they're good draw runners i just don't like how that one is it's a bit stiffer than that one but it was out of the box but we're all different right but anyway this is from the back you can see what it looks like there um, bit of angle for the chair so that can go back and and close and you should be all good with the the drawers not moving i am hating this project i don't even know why i bother doing it why do i bother with all of this Fucking hell. probably still bolted down isn't it Of course it is, of course it's still bolted down. Let's have a look at this Frankenstein bullshit. Was off by four or five mil. Dang it! it needs to be up there like that. Oh, that looks so good. But I f***ed it up again. Oh well. What I'll do is I'll curve the backs and it will look like part of the design. People will be like, oh, it's just fucking. I was doing new things. So these runners are pretty damn strong to be fair and uh, that's uh, that's it. So the idea is, by the way, don't I, I would never recommend these front runner chairs. I really don't like them. The two of them together, seven kilos, it's a considerable amount of weight. Um, I appreciate they're tough, but I wish they'd made them out of aluminium. Um, but yeah, the idea being, you know, it's just a versatile drawer that you can basically put whatever you want in and um, you know I can have some stuff here too like maybe the axe and the saw so I was chatting to a chap called Forest Road Explorer last night and he showed me his draw system which is pretty similar to this one and he had made some platforms he actually had three I think his draw system was way bigger he had like three platforms I'm gonna try and do the same here so that I can have a platform here I can sort of move about basically. Now this video has been total dog shit, I know. Um, I've actually found this build extremely difficult. Even though I've got to this stage now and it's really simple, prior to this I've been screwing around with all kinds of things. I made like a slide out fridge platform with a chopping block on it and uh, 
it was just an absolute disaster. It looks cool on pictures and maybe on video, but the draw runners were a little bit tired in fairness to them. I did get given them for free, which is um, very generous, and I did shorten them, which might have been why they got ruined actually. Um, but it was good for testing stuff, but that didn't quite work out. I will obviously have the fridge just there, but the thing is the fridge I've got isn't a fridge I think I'm gonna be keeping forever. So I'm reluctant to build anything specific for it. That should be the little rail anyway. I put a strip along the back, I actually screwed it up the first time round, no surprise but it just means that it can be hinged a little bit and lifted up without it kind of sliding down into the trunk. It does look nice with two, I will give it that. There's a, there's a lot of real estate. There's a lot of flat surface to be working on. I just found some hinges that Megan bought for a project ages ago, but she never even began it. Finders keepers, well, if she does need them, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. finished it yet I need to get some sanding gear and, and just kind of get all this sorted but um, it works fine you open that you've got a work surface there if you want one you can access the drawers it's nice and simple it's removable it's not ridiculously heavy just incorporating some space obviously there will be a hidden compartment somewhere in the vehicle where I will be able to quick deploy uh you know my um yeah my my things things like electronics the air compressor all of that stuff i haven't even thought of that yet i'm just hoping the carpet arrives soon i ordered it last week still not here um it said it was in stock so i hate stuff like that when you buy things it's like in stock shipped within one to three days and it's been a week but anyway first world problems but that drawer system's looking good. So I'm gonna sand it all down now, get it prepped and ready for wrapping with carpet and also probably paint some of the internals. the draw system all sanded down and ready all the edges are smoothed out it's looking good any sort of loose grain has been removed as well obviously I've got to wait for the carpet to wrap it but some parts of it might have to be painted I'll just have to see how I go with it but I actually managed to pick up a can of like leather and vinyl paint this can be used on plastic too it's basically the same color paint code as the interior of my Cherokee I don't have a lot of it I'm just gonna do the back panels. They're the worst ones. Hopefully this just kind of finishes it off because the back is gonna be impossible to get to once the draw system's in. So the rest I can tackle another time, but probably should do this job once and one time only. There's a lot of random screw holes in this interior from people screwing it. So I'm gonna use this broken piece of interior that I've got to just try and fill the holes um, and then sand everything down flat. Let's see how that goes. So that's how that came out. Pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
So considering there were holes everywhere, it looks pretty good. And the adhesion, the adhesion seems good too. You can't just break it off. It's kind of melted into the plastic. So um, that turned out really well. So that's basically ready to paint now. I'm just gonna give it a wipe down first. So the interior pieces are done, although what I will say is, is this can barely had enough paint really to do the three panels. This took quite a lot of paint because it was just in terrible condition and it's come out horrible. And what I'll say is, is actually don't do what I did, don't sand them, just, scot just use a scotch pad. I, I wrecked it by sanding it and then I had to go over it with lots of different grades of paper to get it out and I couldn't be bothered on this bottom bit really because it always looks poo. That one I spent a bit more time on because it was the worst of them. It's come out okay, but you can see where I've melted the plastic to fill the, the holes. It's kind of furred up the plastic and you need a lot of paint to fill that. Um, and yeah, you know, so, so I've mainly painted the areas that I know you'll see and the areas that can't be seen under the draw system, I've just kind of not bothered too much with them, but it, they could do with just another can dumped on them really, and that would probably make them look the world of, of good, you know, like this one here that I spent the most time on, but it is a lot better. I've reinstalled the draw system. It isn't bolted down yet, but I put the panels back in. I checked for paint and it just takes too long uh, for the paint to arrive, but it looks all right. You know, it's it's... It's pretty good. It's a nice colour and I did miss a few patches down. I basically ran out of paint, but I don't you're really going to see that. And plus stuff gets thrown in there anyway. But um, yeah, that's that's the draw system pretty much installed. I've chucked a couple of ports on there and I've installed a very, very basic electrical setup. Just got a split relay there. So when the um, ignition's on, the power comes on at the back. When the ignition's off, obviously switches off. A fuse that can be accessed very easily although the cover has broken off so I actually have to get a new housing because that's pretty dodgy that needs to be connected up and that's for the appliances on the ports plus and minus here or you know earth and positive or whatever and put a connector on there a connector on there and then obviously connect up and install the panel so each panel will kind of be individually wrapped and the draw system can come apart the only thing I've got left to do really is get these connectors sorted and uh, get that installed and then I've got to wait for the carpet which will be here next week but to my right hand side I've got an absolute mountain of camping equipment and not all of it's going in it's uh, it's just kind of all here plus a lot of other extra options just so I can kind of figure out what we're doing because the reality is is uh, camping with the family is completely different to camping solo. I think one of the major issues that I face really using a Cherokee as my base vehicle is, is the amount of space the vehicle has. It has got me thinking a little bit about kind of going forward and, and what I used to use the vehicle for. I mean, if you remember in the early videos, I never had a roof tent. I actually used to sleep in my awning room and I'd also sleep in the hammock out the back of the vehicle and in a ground tent. And, um, and that was just the way I got around and I had a roof rack on top and, you know, it had some gear on it. It was really when we traveled as a family that the roof rack got loaded up. Some people might consider like us sleeping in the awning room as, fam as a family camp, killing two birds with one stone, but you get a lot of footfall in, in the awning room throughout the day. And with the amount of flies you get in Sweden, that the mosquitoes, the brems, the knots, and all these other, other sort of flies you have here, like you really need the bedroom to not have footfall throughout the day. You don't want to be going in and out of it. You're just letting in the hordes. Like if I slept in the vehicle in the summer, it just doesn't work. I've tried it and it does not work. You. You really would have to have a setup where everything gets taken out of the vehicle and set up away from the vehicle. The door get the hatch gets shut, like the boot shut all the time, and you don't go in the vehicle until you're ready to sleep. Because if you have this open all day, you will have millions of mosquitoes and biting midges in there, and you won't be getting them out before you go to bed. Someone suggested a fly net here, um, so you're going into like a fly net, but. Again, like the sound of mosquitoes 
is is just a difficult sound to sleep to. So having a roof tent is a kind of big plus in a way because you have that space up there untouched until you're ready to go to bed. Other rooms or in the vehicle, it doesn't matter what gets in there, it doesn't matter what gets in the awning room. It can be full of flies, it can be full of whatever. Like for me, if I was just solo all the time, I, I'd take the roof tent off and I'd have a platform for the winter, but in the summer, I'd just be in my hammock or in my, um, in my MSR tent. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make without sounding like I'm just complaining about having to adapt the vehicle for family-based adventures, that, that isn't what I'm doing. The point I'm making is that we absolutely love going out and touring around and traveling and going into the wilderness and doing hiking and fishing and camping as a family every year. And we try and do as much of it as we can in the summer. There used to be a lot of camping videos as a family, like family camping videos on this channel, but we took them down as we both came to an agreement that we didn't want to put our son online until he was a bit older and he actually wanted to be on video so you know there's a bit of a trade-off here and there's always going to be um you know some, some somewhere where this kind of build fails really and, and falters and you know could be better because you can never really easily build a jack of all trades and a master of none you know or else it ends up just being grossly overweight and not good at anything. So, you know, the vehicle really is kitted up as like an adventure four wheel drive vehicle. You know, it's got a lot of ground clearance, a lot of articulation, suspension, travel, armor, frame stiffness, sliders, bumpers, and, you know, re self recovery equipment on board. So now we do family stuff and I've put a tent on it. You know, I've always been torn in doing that because it sort of is neutering the capability of the vehicle and what I built it for. So as a base platform, the point I'm trying to make is it's not the best foundation to be building a family-based camping touring vehicle out of, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're way better off, for example, in Sweden in the summer with just a four-wheel drive van, because that's all you need. The terrain is very dry um, and partic not particularly challenging. So you just need like a four wheel drive van, but we're not going to be able to get anything like that anytime soon and we have no plans to. So I'm just making do with this build and trying to make it work for us. And that's kind of the point I'm trying to make, but it pains me to do certain things to it, like have a heavy roof tent on top because, you know, I understand what that does to me in the winter when I'm in deep snow and I've got an extra like 90 kilos on the roof of the vehicle. But anyway, um, you know, the, these are just the trials and tribulations that we face. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, that that's the way it is. But we will be going out this weekend and having some fun in this, regardless of, of all of what I've just said, you know. It's what it's all about at the end of the day. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, appreciate all your support. Thanks to the guys on Patreon for your support as well. And I will see you very soon in another one. Take care. Got the amp compressor for the blow up doll and the draw system should be big enough for the black mamba. So that's the essentials covered anyway.